now that we've kind of gotten more familiar with the Dremio interface, let's actually connect more data because one of the best things about Dremio is that not only does it let you curate the views and organize them for collaborating with other people, but it lets you connect data from all over the place. So you're able to collect, really connect data kind of falls into four categories. So I'll kind of start from the bottom. You can connect databases and data warehouses. So you can connect databases like MongoDB, MySQL, SQL Server, PostgreSQL, or data warehouses like Snowflake, Vertica, and Amazon Redshift, and others. And those are going to be basically database and data warehouse systems where the data is exposed to you as sort of a catalog of tables. You're able to connect your data lakes or your object storage sources. So this could be things like Hadoop, HDFS, could be, you know, things like Google Cloud Storage, Azure Storage, Azure Data Lake Storage, Amazon S3. This could be any source that is compatible with the S3 API. So that opens up the world to a variety of different object storage sources that are oftentimes deployed on-prem, such as MinIO, Pure Storage Fast, NetApp, that can be connected through the Amazon S3 connector. And then last category would be like lake house catalogs. So when I say lake house catalogs, the idea is that they're cataloging data sets on your data lake, but they're exposing them to you not as files in storage, but as tables in the same way that a database or a data warehouse system will expose. So basically, generally, you can connect these four categories of data sets to Dremio and then basically have them all work together from one place to curate the views on the data your business needs. So let's connect the data sets based on this particular environment, which is going to, we'll just start off from the bottom, we're going to connect Postgres. So we have a Postgres database running. So we'll call this Postgres we'll call it DB for database. Okay, so this is gonna be our database source. As I fill in for other database sources, now the host is Postgres, that's determined by the Docker compose file from which I generated this environment. The default database is my database. Again, that's also determined by the settings in my Docker compose file. And the credentials should be admin and password. That's generally gonna be the credentials for most of this. And I'm gonna hit save. Okay, cool. So now I see I have a connection to a database and I can click here and I can see that there's the tables that I have in the database and I can run queries against it just like any other source. Okay, so I've literally just run a query against my Postgres database directly from Dremio. Now we have two other sources we wanna connect. I wanna connect an object storage source. So we're gonna use the Amazon S3 connector. And we're gonna call this data lake to represent our data lake. Okay, and then basically this is going to be connecting to our MinIO instance, which has again two buckets, Data Lake House and Data Lake. Data Lake will be used for our object storage connection. Data Lake House will be used to store our tables. So here I'm going to have admin password. I'm going to decrypt the connection because again, I'm doing this all locally from my laptop, so nothing's set up with an SSL certificate. <clears throat> I'm going to head over to advanced options. I'm going to enable compatibility mode, meaning I'm using a an S3 compatible source, not S3 itself. I'm going to say, hey, which bucket do I want to be sort of like the main bucket for this connection, which will be that data lake bucket. And then I'm going to add a few connection properties. One, which is this path style access property. I want to set that to true. That has to do with the way that Dremio is going to make requests over a REST. So essentially by default, S3 uses, uses the subdomain. So basically if my bucket's called my bucket, it would be like mybucket.s3.com or something like that. While with MinIO, it's gonna use path style access. So it's not, so it'd be more like minio.com slash data lake would be to access my data lake bucket. So this just tells Dremio to kind of use that particular style of access. And then I need to tell it where, what is the URL. So don't go to the default S3 URL. Instead, I wanted to go to MinIO 9000. That's where I have MinIO running. And again, the reason why the, the host is MinIO is because of the settings in my Docker compose file. So with all that set, I connect it. And there it is. And at this point, all those connections are set. I don't have to really reconnect this data again. So now I have my data lake and I can see all the files that were inside that data lake bucket in my MinIO instance, okay, which includes all of this data that we'll work with later on. 
And then the final source I want to connect is again a lake house catalog, which is Nessie. Nessie is a really cool lake house catalog that make, that's unique because it also offers Git like functionality, the ability to, to do like branching on your tables, merging, um, which allows you to kind of isolate workloads, all the benefits that you would get when you use Git for code, but with your data. Now, in this case, we're going to call this lake house because this represents our lake house. And I'm going to connect to the URL where Nessie is running which is, again, Nessie, the, the Nessie host is determined by my Docker Compose file. But that's the URL. It's just basically a plain vanilla Nessie running out of its Docker container, so it's no authentication set up. And you can choose what you want to use, where you want to store the data. Now I'm going to use min.io, so I want to use the AWS storage provider, so I can put in those, um, you know, designated as a S3 compatible source. So the bucket that I want the data saved in is data lake house. That is the bucket in min.io in which I want any tables that I create or have to be to, to exist. And then again, admin password, that's my information for min.io. Then I'm gonna again set S3 pass style access to true, endpoint to min.io 9000. And then instead of a checkbox to set up Dremio compatibility mode, for this source, I, I have to do this setting right here, dremio.s3.compat, and I'm just going to set that to true. So that also sets me to compatibility mode. And again, I don't want to encrypt the connection because we're doing this all from our laptop. And I hit save, and I should be good to go. Awesome. Okay, so now I have my lake house catalog, my data lake, and a database all connected to Dremio, and I can begin working with all that data, which we'll see in the coming videos.